Welcome back to the Be A Light uh, podcast. And this is the Light Leadership Series. And this is the Musicians Edition. Y'all gonna have to tap in. It's about to be real in here. And I'm with some great men. So, uh, Without further ado, I'm going to introduce these men. Man, these men I've known since, man, high school, man, going back, way back. You know, and, and, and I respect the family. I respect the hustle. I respect the mentality behind what y'all stand on. And that's why I brought y'all on the podcast. Um, first, 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 man, talking about my, my, my boy, Ron D. Man, what's good with you? Man, go ahead, talk to the people, man. Tell them who you are. Tell them where to find you, all that good stuff. Yeah, man, you know, it's... It's wrong, D. You know, straight out of Colleen, Texas. You can catch me on uh, Instagram at uh, official underscore wrong underscore D. My YouTube channel is official wrong D as well. You can just search up uh, uh, wrong D uh, on uh, on YouTube. I have two different channels on there. Uh, one channel by Distro Kid, and uh, you know, yeah, everything is just on there, man. If you into music, you into watching videos, you into the culture, you into you know the rap culture, the rap scene, you know, shit, you should tap in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, and then, and then we got my boy D. Riz, man. His brother, man. What's, hey, what's good with on? you? It's also the brother right here. Go ahead and just show something to him. Hey, man. It's D. Riz, man. Uh, Dura, that's my real name. Clean, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Long Branch. Uh, as far as Facebook and all that, I just got my personal. I haven't gotten to the business yet, but you can look me up, D. Northside Riz. Yes, sir. You know, and whenever you tap in with Rome, and Rome doing his music, I'm going to be in there with him. So, you know, and that's what I respect the most. And uh, I'm bringing these. Gentlemen, to y'all, because I'm telling y'all right now, you know what I'm saying, what the Be A Light podcast represents, we represent mindset development, career session education, leadership development. I'm talking about building real men and women out here. This is, these are not people that are not standing on principle. Like, that's what this is all about. So we're trying to be able to perpetuate that message and be a light for y'all. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into it, man. You know, going into the background of everything, like we like they talked about, we from Colleen, Texas. Uh, we grew up here in this area. Central Texas living is different. You know what I'm saying? People don't really know a lot about us because I feel like we don't got a lot of big names, especially when we talk about the music scene, which I, you know what I'm saying, doing music um, and things like that. Wrong. I remember going back to high school, bro, when you had the uh, tape, the the CD, where yeah. everybody had that CD going around. It was like, hey, you got that wrong D, and everybody would know them songs word for word, bro. And yeah. it was just like, I think the realest, rawest part about it was you speaking about what we were seeing. And what yeah. we really was feeling in, um, it was our life. You know what I'm saying? I think that the connection between, I was an athlete, but him making music, I felt, it was like on the same, I was like, this dude understands. We would sit in the car and we'd be riding around Leo Buckley, just chopping it. I know yeah. you remember. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of talk about y'all's background growing up, bro. Like, just just break that down and what, what was it like and what kind of led you to where you are now? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, we originally came from uh from San Antonio. Yeah, we used to live in San Antonio. We got a lot of family out there in San Antonio. Shout out San Antonio. Yeah, Shout out Mitchell's Bell Bonds. Yeah, you Mitchell's know, out there. A lot of Mitchell's out there. My grandfather, you know, but a lot of bloodline out there, a lot of family. But uh <clears throat> yeah, we uh we yeah, we moved down here since like uh Hay Branch days. Yeah. Two thousand two. Yeah. Two thousand two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh yeah, and then from there, she, and, and we've been here ever since. Yeah, we've been here ever since, really. And then uh, we started. Uh, yeah, we yeah, we started off on the streets of Colleen, really. And then back then, all we knew was Long Branch. Yeah, that's all we knew. Like yeah. we didn't know we didn't know nothing else. Yeah, it was just all. Oh, we from Long Branch. Yeah, yeah. this is, all this is Long Branch. You know, we yeah. didn't really know the difference between like the areas until you know our parents started getting better jobs and and moving to other sides of the. Yeah. That's that's when pops got out. Yeah, and then. We started living a little better, you know, we're both. What year was that? Uh, probably like 2000. What? 12, maybe? No. No, nah, that's too late. Five? That was early. No, nah, six. Because that's when we moved. Six. You know, first it was just mom. Yeah. Okay. When we lived on uh right way. Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. Yeah, yeah, y'all was out there deep in the L. You talking about hay branch, and then, and then I remember y'all. You was repping the L hard at Heights, and I was like, "That, that ain't nowhere close to <laughs> still." You too. I remember y'all yeah. boys walking. Around. I was like, "You know what? That's why I rocked with y'all because y'all always stood on what y'all believed in and what y'all was like representing." Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, for real. But it, but going into the going into it, though, you know, talking about the music influence though, where did that come from? 
Because, like I said, man, since ah man, this dude's rapping forever. I don't he's rapping for a minute. Where where'd that come from? Man, like I I just always just been into, you know, I mean, like, I mean, really as a kid, you know, I started uh my first favorite rapper was like it was like DMX. Yeah, you know, RP DMX. RP. We uh yeah, back back when I used to live in San Antonio, I remember I used to listen to him a lot. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, like, I really used to like a lot of the rappers. You know what I'm saying? It just used to, you know, it just just, just used to catch my attention. You sure. know what I'm saying? I'm, I remember a lot of times I would just, I just had my headphones in. I just zone out, headphones in. I used to even walk through the hallways like that. I don't even really hear nothing going on. I just got the headphones on, and I can just always like just zone out yeah. to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it kind of took me away. Took, took me to, took me somewhere else in a way, you know what I'm saying? So I just always felt, I just always felt connected to, you know, the pattern of, uh, you know, wavelengths or frequency, or whatever, yeah. The frequency. Heck yeah. yeah. Always brighten the mood too, especially, you know what I'm saying, that, that rap culture, you know. We grew up listening to a lot of that as well, you know what I'm saying, because our parents like it. That's all I about to say, Riz, did you get that influence too? Yeah, yeah, I get, a lot of my influence come from Rome right here. My music come from my pops, my mom, Listening to the West Coast type of music, yeah, Ice Cube yeah. type era, yeah. West Coast connection, that type of stuff. And my mom used to sing. For real? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah man. Type. Yeah, like I had the mom who used to clean up the house singing and need to break her loud. Like, hey, for real. I feel you. My dad used to do the same thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My dad used to be the same way. So I know that influence, bro. It's yeah. like you just you just was going to get it either way. Like, it was like it was, yeah. it was always around. It was always there. Yeah. And I think them frequencies, too, you know what I'm saying? You talk about growing up in a household. Because, like, for me, it was, it was, I got athletics and I got the music part. And uh, the music didn't, I I didn't really go towards that because I was so good at athletics. So I just used music to be able to work out to, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I was always working out. So I always had my headphones on. So I'm listening to all the same stuff you're talking about. I'm listening to West Coast. I'm listening to X. I'm listening to Tupac. I'm listening to Zero. I'm listening, I'm listening to just artists all the time. And I, I fell in love with music. And I, I feel like, you know, Growing up, bro, it was either you was going to be an athlete or you was going to be an entertainer. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was really the main things. Or you was going to be in the streets. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like it was kind of like a thing where, for me, I just kept getting pushed, pushed one route, which was the athletics. But I want people to know that musicians, being a musician, right, it seemed like such a, uh, it's almost like a, a out-of-body experience when you perform, like, music like when you create you create that yeah. artwork you know what yeah. i'm saying like y'all know what i'm talking about when you get to go on it's just like it's out of body it's hard to explain it and i have so much respect for artists that's so that's why i really wanted to bring y'all on here so we can start to kind of highlight you know what I'm saying the whole person behind the art because you know people see the art but they don't know the man they don't know the woman you know what i'm saying it's, it's different when you really sit down with somebody you talk to them about where the influence came from so yeah. man, I, I appreciate y'all being bold enough to get on here and, you know what I'm saying build your brand in this way yeah, one hundred percent. Appreciate you for having me. Nah, one hundred percent. Y'all already know what it is, but um, I want to kind of dig into this real quick. So then, boom, like as of right now, right where we are, y'all men that have kids, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all relationships, um, y'all building, y'all believe in legacy. I know y'all do because you see it. You know what I'm saying? Rome, I was on your uh, IG and I was looking at a picture where you had the whole family with your merch on. The whole fam was there. All your brothers was there. I seen your pops in the picture, I think, as well. Yeah. I was like, man, that's yeah. powerful seeing stuff like that. Um, y'all take pictures with y'all kids. Y'all take care of y'all kids. Um, y'all do music together. Y'all believe in legacy. Where is that importance? Where does that come from? Because for me, I'll just speak on it. I think it's the most important thing of, of everything. Like yeah. to be able to know that there's a there's a, a hierarchy and there's a lineage. Like, we gonna keep this here within us first. You know what I'm saying? I, I love that y'all about that. Even I remember even back in the gap, bro, I'm always be telling me about him fighting. I'd be like, bro, you always fighting me. Like, man, it's my brother's like, I'm gonna fight with my brother. He's like, okay, what's, I'm like, I would too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and my brother is like, we the same. So it's like, where's that legacy impact and uh, importance, man? Where'd that come from, dog? Like, speak to that. Like, why, why is that so heavy in y'all's, in y'all's uh, lifestyle? Sweet. That's everything. Yeah. Building your family, you know, making sure the generations that's coming and good, you know, we got to set that momentum, you know, just like our grandpa did with the Mitchell. Yeah. He set that standard, you know, we got a lot of good people to look up to in our family, you know, my dad, yeah, most definitely a hard worker to everybody, you know. We know we got to grind to make a way, just like they grind to make a way for us. Yes, sir. You know, because 
we don't want them to have to take that route, you know. The younger ones, our kids, their kids. Uh, we want them to have a route, uh, uh, a job, a uh, security, a place in the business that they can call, that they can learn if they choose to. So they don't have to uh, make any other decisions. Right. You know, right. To get them in any type of trouble or something like that. But yeah, it's that's everything, man. Family, building this legacy, we want to work for ourselves. Yeah. That's what it's all about. We want to make yeah. our own money. We want to hire our own employees. We want to. We don't want to work for nobody, answer nobody. We want to do for us because we know what's good for us, our family together, yes, all together. And yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. We, we really get that energy from our parents mm-hmm. to be like, yeah, to, to be like completely honest, like the whole, uh, the whole merch thing that you seen on Instagram. That was my mom's idea. For real? Yeah. 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 She didn't want to put that. Together, shout out to moms. Yeah, shout, shout out to moms. You know what I'm saying? She the one that, uh, uh, um, yeah, had the idea that uh, we throw the New Year's party. And, uh, you know, we was playing my music all night. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like my parents been through a lot of like, you know, ride or die situations yeah. with each other. You dig what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of like one of them things. It's like, you know, that's just how the energy is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, we're going to ride together. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to die with each other. Like all that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's just what it is, you know, like family first, yeah. you know, you know, so, you know, that energy just always been there, you know, like naturally. Yeah, no, that's real. That's real. I, I I felt that energy, man, from day one coming up to y'all crib over there uh, in, in Heather Glen, man. Yeah. I, I always put that energy on it. I was like, man, this, this is a family, bro. I was like, yeah, they definitely. really like, they love each other. I was like, that's, that's something that you don't see a lot because I feel like a lot of families let little things like, you know, right. somebody get into a situation and break down destruction everybody on their own mm-hmm. and, and we can't survive on our own and we can't build wealth on our own ain't no way we right. got to do it collectively like yeah. we have to exactly. we ain't got no choice so I, I love that and i kind of want y'all to continue to, you know what i'm saying believing in that mission and keep keep that in y'all kids man because i'm doing the same thing i got my daughter in here right now you know what i'm saying yes. so she i told her on the way up here i said katie sounds like if daddy gone this gonna be you you're gonna have to keep this going like you need to know and that's that's mm-hmm. something i think we gotta let our kids know and you know what I'm saying? We take one from our parents, we get that baton and we run with it. So you yeah. know what I'm saying? That, that's how sure. we, we do that. But um, then going into the influence, man, of uh, you know what I'm saying, just influence of music, man. How how do y'all feel like that uh that plays a role in what's going on out here? And, and specifically, wrong when I'm, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about like when you create your lyrics, right? Like I, I was I was looking at uh y'all's uh, last performance at Enclave, and uh y'all was one of the lyrics I think on one of the songs I can't remember the name, but it's on the grind. Can't stop now. Yeah. And it, y'all, you keep repeating it. Y'all keep repeating it. And like, even those types of lyrics, I'm on the grind. I can't stop now. What What is the power behind lyrics like that? And what, what message you feel like is that imparting in the person that got it in their, in their headphones, got it banging through their car? Like, what what, yeah. what is that pushing? Like, what what are we getting through to people? Like, what, what frequency are we riding on right there? Yeah, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all you got to do is get it going. Yeah. And then once you get it going, it's like, you can't even imagine stopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to reach, I got to reach the next point. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say I'm on the grind. Can't stop now. Yeah. But first you got to get on the grind. Got to. You know what I mean? And then like, you know, so like, you know, like that's, that's what I really try to, uh, you know, like, you know, it's really, you know, just to motivate the people to, you know, get out there and do something. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you know, I'm, I'm really into motivational music. So yeah. If I'm gonna talk something, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, it's gonna, I'm gonna talk motivation. At yeah. The, at, at, at the, at the very least. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. And, and before you get on this, Riz, I want to speak to that because you do talk motivation, and I feel like there's a lot of people that don't understand the delivery, the, the, the delivery of your motivation. Like some people would say, well, he talking about this, this, and this, so this can't be motivating people to do. Like, no, you don't understand because you ain't been around it. Like this is motivation for a lot of different things. This ain't just one thing. This is taking right. you on, down a lot of different roads. You gotta listen to what he's saying and get the real message out of it. Like the real message ain't just like the surface level. It's deeper than that. Like you gotta feel what it feel like to like not have. Like it's like, bro, you ain't everybody been in a situation where I'm out of luck. I ain't got no bread. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I gotta do something. I'm gonna right. do it. I'm gonna start. Yeah. <laughs> like that's gonna be the start. I'm gonna start, and then once I start, I ain't stopping. Like, right. well, what am I going to stop for? I feel that. But can you speak to that, too, as well, Riz? Like, what's the what's the, the impact of that influence of that music, man? Well, yeah, you know, that 
song right there, you know, that's Rome's song. So, you know, he put his meaning to it. But like when I jam it, when I listen to it, I'm on the grind, can't stop now, you know, kind of like what y'all saying the same way. If I stop, what's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen to my people? What's going to happen to the people I feed? My family, what's going to happen to this, that? I can't stop. Yeah. You know, ain't no option. You it's know what option, I mean? You yeah. got to really know that. And when you hear it, that lets you know when you're feeling doubtful, when you feel like you're finna give up, you know what I'm saying? You know, you play that wrong D, I'm on the ground, I can't yeah. stop now. Yeah, yeah. That road deep give me live for years. <laughs> yeah. that that's why I got you on here, man. That road deep give me live for years. And, you know what I'm saying? I kind of want to pivot a little bit, you know what I'm saying, to get on to a little more serious topic. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's real life. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, like the pivoting and the, and the the amount of strength as a man it takes to be in a situation where, you know what I'm saying, the system tries, or not gonna say tries, but it, it, it puts you in a situation where you gotta sit down, you gotta, you gotta, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You on ice. Um, can, can you speak to a little bit with D-Ridge, you just got out, mm-hmm. that's long, but how long ago was that? Uh, about four months, five months. About four or five mm-hmm. months. But now you have now started a business already. Yes, sir. Already on your, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you plug that. Mm-hmm. But can you speak to my brothers and sisters out there that's in your situation, that's trying to figure out what to do, and they may be looking at you right at this moment like, man, this brother doing something I could probably start doing. Can you speak to like the mindset of kind of getting out, getting on your feet and getting back stable again, back to your natural position? You know what I'm saying? Can you speak to that, bro? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the main key is, is patience. You know, when you get out, you got to keep that, you know, humble mind state. If that was a mind state, you know, when you was incarcerated, hopefully you was learning and reading when you was down there. When you get out, you got to stay patient and you got to, you got to go for your dreams, what you learn, what you want to do. You know, as far as my situation, I was able to learn about credit mm-hmm. when I was inside. You know, I read, I read a few books about personal credit and business credit. When I got out, I had a childhood friend that had a credit company. Yeah. So getting locked in with him was like perfect. I already knew a little bit and I was able to, you know, work my own credit credit and leverage my own credit to get to auto loans, which got me the vehicles. Mm. You know, and really, you know, this can happen to anybody. You know, if you if you serious about getting your credit fixed, you know, and, and you want to tap in, that that can also be for you, whether it's, you know, a home or just one car, whether you want to do, but I, I leverage mine to start this business so I can have money coming in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Without, wow, I can have money coming in, starting my own legacy, and I can be around my people and my family more while I'm doing something that I would enjoy doing, you know? Yeah. I've always been dealing with cars, like detailing the money jobs like that, you know? I like, I like doing stuff like that, but that's how, and then mainly, you know, that's how I did it, but you know, you just got to be patient, be humble, and you know, if you believe in God, know that God got you. 100%. Stay righteous, you know. Yeah, and then the business name, bro, plug the business as well. Price Auto Rentals. Mm-hmm. That is that is the business, you know, you can uh, contact me. I already gave my Facebook name. I don't have a business number yet. Yeah. But I gave my Facebook and Instagram. You can contact me on that. I have uh, three cars right now. We'll have more soon. But, you know. Salute, brother. Mm-hmm. Salute. I, I'm proud of you for that, bro. For real. That's, that's sure powerful. That. And, then, and then, Ron, you can speak to that a little bit too, bro. Oh, yeah, man. I'm uh, yeah, I'm definitely proud of uh, of what he's doing, it's, it's, especially in, uh, in in this short amount of time. But uh, he's definitely done his uh, due diligence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it seems like he's just, you know, it seemed like out of nowhere he's just on it, but you know he had to do a lot of background work to uh, get to where he's at, and uh, he's definitely put in the work, and uh, he's, you know what I mean? It's like um, he's definitely uh, deserving. Uh, he's he's definitely um, he's responsible enough for the duty that he's putting out for himself. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and to see it work out for him like that, it's like, you know, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's real cool to see him, you know, boss himself up like that. 100%, bro. And it's crazy. I'm going to plug my book real quick, too. I wrote my book recently, y'all. So I wrote that like two, I wrote last year now, 2022. But, um, excuse me, Um, in my book, I got a strategy where I say, this is how people can achieve any goal they want to achieve in life. And, and it's, the strategy is called the believe strategy, where it's, uh, you start out with the B, which is build um, your foundation. The E is educate yourself. Uh, the L is love what you're doing. The I is increase what you do. Uh, then you got to uh, energize yourself. You visualize what you're about to do, and then you go execute. So I feel like you building that foundation, is that that strong B is where you started to like say, okay, this is what I need to do. You got the pieces together, got the education. 
And now you kind of fall in love with the process because the process is going to be, it's going to be slow. Like you say, you got to be patient, but it's like, we can't be afraid of, of taking it slow to be able to have it forever. You know what I'm saying? Like if we're going to have it for a long time, it can't come quick. You know what I'm saying? I seen a quote somebody said on, on some social media where it was like, you know what I'm saying? When you're working for God, you got to know that it's going to be slow. But if you start working for the devil, you'll be sprinting. You know what I'm saying? God gonna have you on that marathon, but the devil will have you on that sprint and then that sprint yeah. will run you off the cliff. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, you gotta be able to be comfortable and just waiting on it. Like, hurry up and wait. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get to the spot. Like when you hooping. Like if you hooping, you gonna get to the spot and then you gonna let them do whatever they do, but they don't, dic they don't dictate your offense. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gonna play your game. So I think about it in that way and I think that's powerful that you're doing that, bro. So I wanna salute you on that again. Um, and then you as well too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I know, you know, being in this media lane, like I, I picked up podcasts in the last year, but just being patient and, and doing things the right way, you know what I'm saying? Believing in yourself, believing in your brand, believing in your craft. It's like things start to, you know, progressively get better, but you can't be swayed by the setbacks because they gonna come. Like, it's like, there's no way around getting set back, but the setback can't set you up for another setback. It gotta set you up for, you know what I'm saying? An another, uh, Propel going forward, like you got to prepare yourself in, in a way going forward from the losses. Like you got to learn from. It. Mm -hmm. and I think that's where you see a lot of dudes mess up. They be taking the same L twice. You can't do that. <laughs> it's like we can't do that. Like yeah. you know, yeah, what I'm man. You got to get out. Got to get out of that uh, uh, insanity mindset. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, doing the same thing over and over, expecting yeah. different results. Yeah. It's like come on, man. It's like come on. But uh, you know, what I'm saying we we can uh, pivot a little bit. So, I mean, I I, I kind of want to talk about. I guess pride, I want to speak on this, right? Because I think when we talk about this podcast today, what we're getting on right now with this interview is really the theme of it. I wanted to talk about just like standing on principle, right? Pride, um, which is like a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Because when you have pride, you do great work. You know what I'm saying? You love your people. You love your family. You know, you, 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 you take control of your situation when you have pride because like I believe in this, this is my stuff like these, these are my people but then the other side of it is is that it almost hurts your bottom line when it comes to being humble you know so like you talk about being humble and just you know what I'm saying knowing when to take the back seat knowing when it's you know what I'm saying just just like hey I gotta let that go I gotta let that fly yeah um can y'all speak on maybe the struggle or maybe the growth in that area or maybe if you're killing it right now like how have you been handling pride? Because for me, um, it's been a very roller coaster type of situation. Like, you know, it's it's hard when you got big dreams, bro, and, and people and situations try to, you know what I'm saying, like get in the way of that. You like, you know, I'm gonna will myself through this. Like you, you as a man, you wanna get yourself through it, you wanna will yourself through it, but you almost gotta have like a push and pull, you gotta have a balance. That's why you need almost like you need a good woman in your life. At all times, because they're gonna give you that perspective. Like it's like, hey, yeah, sure, you know, you you being a little bullheaded, you being a little dumb here. All right, you think a little more about it, you using, you know. So can y'all speak on that? You know, just the, the pride struggle and and how that's played a role in y'all's life. Yeah, uh, I feel like it's a it's a process on uh, humbling yourself. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, having kids ooh, could uh, humble you. That's facts, bro. You know. Um, you know, I feel like uh, without me having kids, it took me a lot longer to get to the, to get to the level that I am now when it comes to, you know, um, you know, uh, choosing to understand in, in, instead of uh, acting out of character. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so, like, yeah, definitely having kids put me in that position to where I have to sit and understand why they're having such a hard time. Or, <laughs> well, it's hard sometimes. You know I mean? yeah. Like, they screaming. They, yeah. They aching your nerves, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, uh, but, you know what I'm saying? But like, uh, if you lose control, then you know what I mean? Yes. It's like, no you chance. have to see that like, you you have to be the better example. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, or you definitely gonna have a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you speak that too, Riz? I'm gonna say, <clears throat> you know, like with age, it gets better. When younger, pride got in the way a lot. A lot of times, we're getting older and wiser, like you yeah. said, children, good patience. Yeah, yeah, but, man. It's you know, it's still there in, in 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 situations. Yeah, that I feel like I'm good at it, 
but I'm stubborn in a way, prideful yeah. in a way where I don't really react, but quiet about the situation, you know, might react without reacting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In that situation, I feel like I got to work on, but as, you know, as, as men, having pride is good because you got to stand for something. Got to. Yeah. You got to stand for something, but you yeah. just got to stand for something, not childishly. Yeah. Value. You know what I'm saying? When you start yeah. doing it childishly and not thinking things out, then that's when that right. pride, you crash and burn over that pride. Man, that's so right. Sh- right. You got, you got to learn how to use, use that energy in a, in a healthy way. Yeah. You know, um, cause, cause that, that was really the problem as, as kids, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's nothing wrong with us having that energy. It's just, we don't know where to, directed you yeah. know what i'm saying and then like uh but but you know but but we're constantly being taught how to how to how to direct it the wrong way yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like especially when you come up in school where it was like they were so good at identifying your problems but not your talents yeah so it's like you know everybody telling like, you your prize a problem it's right. a problem it's, right. like, like, it's like so easy to roast somebody yeah man. yeah <laughs> 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 Y'all boys doing a lot of roasting too. Let's be real. He's doing a lot. <laughs> everybody was everybody was doing a little ro- yeah, a little roasting. You know, <laughs> but I nah. had to. Yeah, <laughs> I had to. Being, you know, being being darker than you know everybody. You so I had to shoot back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, you're right though. I feel you though. But it is. I mean, this is part of how we grew up, man. Yeah, and I definitely. think you know, just like you said, that energy is important. Yeah. You just got to know how to how to put boundaries around it. Right. That's why, like, sports was, like, real important in school, in my opinion. Like, if you weren't playing sports, then you was probably somewhere tripping. <laughs> yes, facts. That's facts. You had you had to do sports. Or you had to do something. Like, you had to have something. And you know what's crazy, bro? So, I'm a teacher now. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm helping out with the clubs on campus. And it's crazy, bro, because the clubs on campus, I never knew as a student, but they have situations where the kids go and do community service, like they had to do volunteer community service. So you had to go to, you know what I'm saying, maybe a shelter or maybe go and help build a home for people less fortunate and give you perspective. Like just give you like some yeah. outside and things to do. Cause a lot of times if you ain't got it and you ain't got things to do and you ain't no perspective, it's like, then you like, I'm just out here. Mm-hmm. When in reality, you're not. There's so many people that's in the same situation as you. It's just the perspective. It's like the lens you got on. That's really what be killing folks. It's like, what are you seeing every day? Because not seeing certain things really keeps you out of rooms. Yeah. And I feel like even going from all of the stuff we've been talking about, I think it's very important for people to understand, like, you know, like I said before, this this podcast, we're trying to empower the men. I really want to empower the men that's in these low places, man. I really do yeah. because, like, you know, depression is real. Anxiety is real. Feeling inadequate is a big thing, especially when you're a father. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can speak on that. I mean, I just been some times in my life where I just felt like I wasn't doing enough. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like I had to, I was on a comeback. Like, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta make this right. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. But knowing that you're enough right here, right now, that you have the power um, to make decisions and change your life and your family's life at all times is an empowering position to be in, especially when you believe in God. God is empowering all our moves. We are made in his image. So no matter what we do, we, you know what I'm saying? He died for our sins. So, I kind of want to know, man, like, you know, to the struggling folks out there, man, what, what's y'all's posing words for them? You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's like, just they don't see no hope, man. They don't see no light. It's like, ain't nothing going right for me. Like, how how would you speak to that struggling man within you? You know what I'm saying? And when I say man, I really want to say boy, because that's kind of that boy type of, you know, uh, psyche. Because as a man, you kind of rise up out of that, even though you do go back to that little boy at times. There's still that trauma in us that we got to heal from. So, yeah. like, what would you say to that man? Um, that's going through that right now. Either one of y'all can take it. It's kind of something for me to uh, to think about. You know, it's it's a conversation I got to have with my kids one day. Yeah, you know, but um, you know, um, well for me, I can speak from you know my experience. Uh, you know, what helped me find my uh, my positive masculinity, sort of. You know, so, yeah. sort of say. Um, you really just find you some uh, some good examples, you know. Um, you know, I think most of us are more of a visual learner. You gotta you gotta see how it's done. You know what I mean? That's why you know. Um, I think the army could be good for for some people. You know, you know the army kind of bring the man out of certain people. Structure. You know, um, I mean, like even doing like a little time. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you sit back and you actually get to paying attention to yourself. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like doing some doing some time can do you some good because you get to pay attention to yourself. Like when you out in this free world, you have all these distractions to where you're not even paying attention to uh, the change of your of, of your body. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. as you grow, as you grow, and as you you know adapt to you know to different things like new ways of eating, a uh, new job, and things like that, you really have to focus on the level of uh, intelligence that you're coming into mm-hmm. due to your experience. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, I feel like uh, people are distracted. Yeah. From uh, They're distracted from the most important thing that we should be paying attention to. And I think that that's it. And, and that's ourselves, like knowledge of self. Thanks. You know what I mean? Because uh, we wasn't curated. I don't believe that we was curated to fail. Yeah. Like we was curated to succeed. All you got to do is be able to focus on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, if you know that your creation didn't fail you in any type of way, you know, you know what I'm saying? The only thing that can hold you back is the outside noise. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and if you can tune that out, you know, if you can develop that, you know, that focus on uh, higher development, you know, it's a process. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's an everyday process. You know what I mean? But, you know, um, shit, I mean, excuse my language, we ain't got number time. You know, I heard it. I heard it. I like that because I like the distraction part too. I think the 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 most focus wins. Period. Yeah, that's it. It's like it always seemed like the most focus wins. Like a person that can close out the noise the most wins every time. Right. Because because you got the one. You know what I'm saying? You got the women. You got the money. You got the Social media, you got the, you know, so you got all these things, you know, people that saying stuff, people focus on haters. Like, it's like, why are you so focused on what all these people got to say? The, the cheers and the booze, all that stuff is a part of it. Like, it's, it's gonna come. Like, somebody gonna try to, you know what I'm saying, play you out some money. It's gonna happen. But you focusing on that ain't that you taking yourself away from your purpose because that's the higher you go, the, the new levels bring new devils. So I, I like what you said. Yeah. And I appreciate you adding that message. And then, Riz, what would you say you leave with the people, you know what I'm saying, in regards to kind of taking them out of that place and being able to get back into their higher self? You know, I would say you just got to just gotta have have faith, you know, have peace. You know, you got to find peace. And you got to find time to meditate and get to yourself. And yeah. Get within yourself. Find out who you really are. Sometimes you got to start over when you get in a situation like that where you feel like you don't know what to do. You can't get out. Yeah. But you got to find out who you are because you know you was put on this earth to to do your job, to be successful, to be whatever you want to be. If you put your mind to it, and you got to restart. And sometimes that's what we got to do. You know, we break down, but as long as you get back up, that's what makes you a man. One hundred. You know, your falls don't really don't really matter if you don't unless you don't take advantage of them. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's real. I love that. As long as you, as long as you get back up, you know what I'm saying. You gonna just keep getting back up, and um, you know, with that being said, bro, I feel like y'all, y'all brought some great energy. Y'all brought some great information. You know what I'm saying. Just one more time, where can the people find y'all? Tap in with y'all. Tap in with the businesses. Tap in with the artistry. You know what I'm saying. Be able to book y'all. All that good stuff. Just go ahead and let the people know. So, where, where can we find y'all one more time? Uh, you could, um, you can get me on Turo. My name on Turo is Daryl Price, and you know, Facebook. The Northside Riz is N A W F S I D E Riz, and then y'all can uh come look up the credit repair company J and J Credit Repair, ran by the King Jackson. That's who I work for. But we can get you right, man. Uh, yeah, Price Auto Runners. That's the that's the DBA. That's the that's the business. You gotta contact me. Social media. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No wrong. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Uh, Facebook. Facebook is my uh, is my government name, Romeo Price. If you want to find me on Facebook, just mm-hmm. Romeo Price. I'm gonna pop right up. Yeah. And uh, my uh, my business page is uh is, is is connected to my you know my personal page, official Rome B. That's connected to that. If you search that up, you'll find me on there. You'll find me on Instagram as official underscore Rome underscore D. On YouTube, same thing, official Rome D. Or you can just type in Rome B. And uh. I also be passing out these these brand cards. Yeah, right here. You know what I'm saying with the, with, the, right here. With, with the QR code on them. Yes, All I gotta do is pull your camera phone on. Uh, pull your camera phone out. Scan it. I keep and, this. Uh, one. Yes, sir. And uh, and uh, uh, my tree link a uh, pop right up. Uh, you'll have access to uh, all my. Uh, I didn't put out three albums. 
uh, all my albums streaming on major streaming platforms. I just put out a music video like two weeks ago called uh, Other Options. Yeah. Yeah, you search Wrong B, official <clears throat> Wrong B on YouTube. That'll pop up yeah. right there. Um, yeah, man, that's about it. That's all my info right there. And I'm co signing Wrong D. Pressure. I got them yes, albums sir. in my Appreciate phone that. right now. Right now. Y'all need to go download that right now. And I know I got a new project coming out soon, right? We got yes, something sir. coming soon. So, and y'all be on the lookout for that, man. Go on his socials, man. Get me on IG, I am Free Juice. Uh, also, Be Light Podcast. Uh, follow us on YouTube. And uh, this is a light leadership series, man. This is Musicians Edition. And hey, y'all got that light. We out. Yes, sir.